Hey GED students, I got an email from GED student Roxanne who's got some questions about some order of operations problems that have sign numbers. Okay, so um, we frequently do have order of operation problems with sign numbers and exponents that show up in the first five problems of the GED when you don't have a calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and work these guys without a calculator. So I'll remind you uh, that there are four steps to the order of operations. First, you want to take care of any groupings. Yes, groupings do include things inside of parentheses, but also inside of brackets, um, radicals, um, the tops and bottoms of fractions. There's lots of different groupings in math. After you finish groupings, you should do any exponents. And remember that exponents include those powers, those little floating numbers, but they also include the radicals, the check mark houses. Um, after finishing up your exponents, you should take care of any multiplication and division you see. And then finally, the very last step is addition and its inverse. All the addition and subtraction that you see will happen last. Okay, so let's take a look at this first problem. So this first problem, I don't see any groupings. Um, even though there's a lot of parentheses here, you guys see a lot of parentheses. If you look inside this parentheses, there's nothing to do in there. That's a four. There's nothing to do in there. That's just one number. Nothing to do in there and nothing to do in there. So I don't have any groupings. Similarly, I don't have any exponents. I don't see any little floating numbers uh, or radicals. And so uh, there's nothing to do in the first two steps, but I do see some multiplication. Um, so the third step is all multiplication and division. And I hope that you can see here, let me grab a different color pen, that there's two acts of multiplication here. Four and negative three are shoved up against each other. The only thing between them is parentheses. That means I'm multiplying. Same thing with negative two and negative three. Shoved up together, nothing between them. That means I'm multiplying. Okay, since these two multiplications share no numbers, they don't have any numbers that they share, I can just go ahead and do them both at the same time. So four times three is 12. And just one negative will hold up in multiplication or division. Just one negative will stick around. And that's going to be plus, and I'm dropping that plus sign from right there. Negative 2 times negative 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 negatives cancel when multiplying, and so I get positive 6. So now I have negative 12 plus positive 6, or just plus 6. Okay, now it's time to do that addition subtraction. Remember what it means that if I'm $12 in debt and I add $6, I'm still going to be in debt, uh, but now I'll be only in debt $6. When the two have different signs, you subtract, bigger sign wins. Okay, great. So that's the answer to that one. Now let's check out the next one. Okay, so next... Um, Example here, number two is a little different because this one does have a grouping. If you go, what just happened? <laughs> Sorry. If you go inside the parentheses here, negative two minus four, we have an operation inside of that grouping. We should definitely take care of that. Okay, so if I'm already two in debt, imagine I'm already at a uh, negative two. And then I go negative four more. I'm going to end up going left four more. So negative three four, five, six. I'll end up being at negative six. So negative two minus four is negative six. Now I'm going to drop down everything I haven't used up. So I'm going to keep these parentheses because they imply an act of multiplication. Uh, see how that two shoved up against the parentheses? And I'm going to keep the exponent, the little floating two. Great. So I finished my groupings. Now remember the next step after groupings is exponents. Exponents next. Don't do the multiplication next. That's what most students think. But careful, exponents should happen before multiplication. So negative 6 squared, what does that mean? That means take negative 6 and multiply it by itself, negative 6. Well, 6 times 6 is 36, and two negatives cancel when multiplying. So negative 6 squared is positive 36. So I'll put that in the parentheses, and I'll drop down that 2. And then 2 times 36 is 72. Great. couple of order of operations problems definitely made trickier by the fact that we have some signed numbers involved and a super great uh, question to get us delving even deeper into order of operations. Okay, so you can go practice this uh, concept in the related Quizlet set and hopefully um, <laughs> they'll behave better now. All right, um, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.